here. I have my Yukon uh, caribou that I got this past year and I've got them in some water and the reason I got the cloth over top of the skull is just so the water can wick over top of it. What I'm trying to do is macerate the skull on this but I don't want to get the um, bez or the bases underwater. I'm trying to rot this thing out without really keeping it so fully submerged and uh, lots of people wonder why are you not using uh, beetles or the boiling or simmering method and there's a couple of reasons I don't want to do the uh, simmering method because I find the nasal bones um, some people can do it but I've never been successful keeping the nasal bones in there without uh, getting them busted off also on some of the other mounts that I've had, I found that um, you just couldn't keep the grease off the lower part of the uh, antler coming out, so I didn't really want to do that. As for the beetles, I could have done that. There's a place about an hour and a half, two hours from here that has them, but again, um, I don't know if they have a uh, freezer or whatever they use big enough to actually put a caribou rack in there. I'm suspecting not, because it would mostly be for deer. Also, it doesn't degrease um, your skull using the beetles either. That's what uh, is good about the maceration, is it cleans the flesh fully, entirely, in every crack, and it also uh, degreases the skulls. It rots, the grease rots away from this thing. All right, here is a couple of uh, deer that I've done in the past and I just wanted to show you guys um, on this skull particularly this one I uh, had it macerated uh, seven years ago now and just wanted to show there's just barely some faint grease staining coming through this part of the skull so you can see the nasal bones, if I can zoom in here, the light's pretty poor. Nasal bones are fully intact. Um, the other advantage of this maceration is the teeth. So, um, that's probably can't tell, but the teeth, they don't crack when you use this. When you use that simmering method, sometimes they do crack. The one mistake I did make on this guy, I had the antlers submerged um, below the water and here you can kind of see some of the color came off a little bit and it also kind of not sure if you can tell in this light but it also kind of grease stained where the um, fat came off of there so I didn't really care for that too much on this one this is my first attempt at maceration though and that was seven years ago let's go check this other guy out now this fella he had a lot better um, results on the. I didn't put the antler bases below the water. We kept. I kept that out as much as I could, and the grease staining never went up the antler. It kept the color on there. It turned out really well. Um, this guy, same thing. The nasal bones are uh, fully kind of intact in here. If you can see, all that fine bone is still in there teeth aren't cracked whatsoever. Um, the teeth cracking might not be a big deal on uh, something like a deer but it, definitely on a predator skull um, it'll make a huge difference because you don't want your canines in particular be cracked and I do have a bear and a mountain lion that uh, right now they're macerated but they are in my degreasing solution so once uh, those guys get out, I'll uh, show them and and uh, also uh, these have been whitened with 40% peroxide. Um, I like the look of the skull, but the teeth I don't think looks natural uh, being bleached out like that. But that being said, overall pretty good result. The predator skulls I'm not going to bleach, I'm just going to leave them the natural um, ivory color and I think that'll be 
probably the best uh, for that. Um, I was just going to show you guys, because we're in a fairly northern climate here. Um, I've got a fish tank heater here to try to keep the water from freezing. It's uh, really cheap. It was only $10, I think, from Walmart. And yes, this cord is rated to be submersible like that. That's how the instructions said to do it, to put it underwater like that. Um, it's only rated for 25 degrees Celsius or about 75 Fahrenheit. Uh, ideally, you would want to try to keep this at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. And that's your optimal rotting temperature. But uh, for myself, I'm just more concerned with trying to keep the uh, water from freezing because it will freeze in here and I'm doing this in my garage because it's in the middle of winter and I will say the only reason I'm getting away with this is because the garage has nothing but quads, trailers, tools, that kind of thing in it so in other words my wife never comes in here this does um, stink I do change the water out once in a while every couple weeks and I do air it out with the garage door but it's this is not a project you really want to do in your house or um, wherever the best place to do this is like a shed or if you live in the country even better but um, I don't have an option right now so this is where where it's going and hopefully the wife doesn't come in here for some reason because I'll be in lots of trouble um, the other thing I was going to show you is I just uh, wrapped this up this uh, this up just so the water will hopefully kind of wick from the sides over top and rot the top out. Um, as you can see, I don't have the uh, antler bases underwater. Um, it's basically the bottoms rotting out. And like I said, I'm, this is the first time I've tried this. If this doesn't work, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But if I'm still doing this by spring, I'll just take the pressure washer and clean these uh, top pieces of the skull out making sure I don't hit those nasal bones because that's really why I'm doing this is I want to keep those nasal bones um, if you can see the uh, front bez is out of the water um, I could probably put a little more water in here but I'm gonna just wait till this warms up it was frozen this morning I just added some more water and uh, just to give you guys an idea I don't know if the size of this thing you can really tell, but uh, this netted 404 inches Boone and Crockett. So, next question is, why didn't you shoulder mount it? Well, I'm getting the cape done, but I've got so much stuff at the taxidermist right now that um, I think I'm just going to Euro mount them for now. And when I get the money or the time comes, or maybe in particular a bigger house, I'm going to shoulder mount them. But for now, this is what I'm working with. And uh, I'll just see if there's any other angle I can give you here. But let's take a look. So right now he doesn't really stink too bad because the water's frozen. But hopefully this heater I just dropped in will help with that. And uh, we'll go from there. Anyways, um, I'll give you guys an update when... Uh, when I get a chance and we get a little further down this process. Alright, it's been uh, about six, eight weeks since the last uh, video update. Just thought I'd um, change the water out and uh, show everyone the progress so far. And I've got some fresh water in there and we've taken off the um, cloth that was over top. And as you can see, it's worked fairly well. Um, still a little bit of tissue on the top, but. Uh, Basically, it's rotted out this entire skull, more or less. Brains will go on a little bit of nose um, meat left. Let's try to get a... And as you can see, some of the harder ligaments and stuff are still on there, but for the most part, it's um, gone. Uh, we've got a little bit of grease left in the top here, but that was expected based on... Uh, we're just using a cloth to rot this thing out. But... Um, it's so far so good. I think we're gonna leave it in here for probably another uh, two, three weeks just to finish this off and then we'll uh, start degreasing it. But yeah, so far pretty happy with how this thing's uh, been coming along. Alright, uh, we've been 
uh, waiting here for a while for this thing to rot out. It's getting later in the winter here, early spring. And we have been changing this water out a bit um, throughout the winter. And let's just see what we got here. So we're pretty much completely cleaned on this thing. See there's still a few little particles in the water, but for the most part, I think we're pretty much all brought out here. One little piece there. But we can get that off pretty easily, I think. Not much left. But, uh, yeah, so the next step will be changing the water out again. And uh, we're going to start the degreasing process. It's a little hard to tell, but uh, this actually looks like it's fairly degreased even in here. Like there's a little dip darker there, but um, by doing this maceration process and this cold water maceration, it actually um, starts degreasing the skull as the flesh is rotting and the grease rots out and migrates out of the bone as you're going along. So it's actually a good way to do it for that reason alone but uh, this skull actually looks quite good the caribou I don't think are quite as greasy as some of the other um, animals there are out there let's just take a look at what the nose looks like here just, uh, all right. so here's the nasal bones now if you can let's see if we can zoom in a little bit there um, it's hard to tell because of the shadows on the camera, but it is rotted right out in there. We've got all the fine nasal bones. Looks pretty good. You can see it's completely rotted out all to the side. There's a little bit of tissue there, but that's pretty marginal. Let's see what we got underneath here. Right. Yeah, underneath. Um, it looks completely rotted out. It's in excellent condition. We don't have any kind of uh, we don't have any kind of uh, bone damage from uh, boiling or simmering. This, I've always had issues getting a really clean mount simmering because of the bone and uh, with the way we've done this, putting the rag over top to rot it out um, that worked actually better than I had expected I didn't know how that was going to go but the tissue got cleaned off and uh, looks pretty good actually and the bonus to all that was we were able to do it without submerging the uh, um, front uh, shovel in the water so that's what I was attempting to do is to get this thing cleaned out without uh, putting the shovel in the water and it looks like that worked. So uh, the next step here, like I said, will be to put in the uh, put in the uh, degreaser or change the water out and put in the degreasing solution and uh, we'll take a look at doing that here next. Alright, just one more view. Um, I just wanted to show you guys what the bottom of this looked like after I pulled it out of the water, dumped the water, and uh, this was without any scrubbing or anything, this is how clean it got. See all of the uh, flesh for the most part is uh, completely gone. A little bit of, uh, looks like fat bubbles there, we can pull that off though. But it's very, very clean, and uh, very happy with how this turned out. Let's see if we can take a look at the back here. The back. Um, piece here is completely stripped off. It's in the shadow so it's hard to see but there's no flesh or nothing on there. And uh, very clean. I'm very happy with how this turned out. But uh, next step now, we are going to put it back in the pail. See if we've dumped the water and cleaned that out. And then we're going to be putting the degreasing solution in. Alright guys, it's uh, we're getting ready to uh, degrease this thing. So I just wanted to show you what I used to degrease it. I used three ingredients. One of them is top secret because a uh, uh, taxidermist friend of mine told me what his solution was. So I promised not to give away his trade secret here. But for most people, 
um, the two ingredient main ingredients will more than sufficiently do the job. Um, and then I'll just show you, got the clear Dawn dish soap and the borax. So the Dawn dish soap's pretty much uh, standard for degreasing skulls. Everybody uses it when, whether they're boiling or doing it this way. Um, the borax, whether it's true or not, I've been told is um, you put it in here and if there's any little bits of flesh or anything, the borax will help loosen that off and get them off the bone. Um, I've never had any negative issues using it, so I continue to do that. And then, um, yeah, it's uh, been pretty good. So next we'll add the water to this. And I did mix up a pail of water with some soap and a little bit of borax in it just to dilute it a bit. But um, I, I did, I do sprinkle some raw borax on the skull specifically. If you remember, we had uh, one little spot right in here that had a little bit of fat or grease or something on it or uh, material and uh, spilt a little bit too much in here, but that's okay. And we'll let it soak. Usually, um, I like to change the water out every week, but because this rotted off so well and every and uh, degreased somewhat um, when it was macerating, I think we'll put the solution in here and leave it for two weeks before we change it. Then we'll kind of see where things are at and possibly uh, degrease it a bit more. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. We'll just see what kind of results we got after the first soak. All right, I thought I'd just give you a quick view. Just uh, filled this up with water. It's got all kinds of soap in it, or uh, borax and our other secret ingredient in here. And uh, yeah, we're just ready to uh, let it sit. Now it's just a waiting game. So um, again, I put the cloth over top of the uh, skull with the idea that it would wick the moisture up and it worked well for the maceration piece. I don't know if this will work or not for degreasing, but I uh, figured out I'll give it a shot and uh, keep it wet, uh, lots of soap in there. We'll see if it works. But uh, anyways, we'll check back in in a couple weeks here. Hey everybody, um, I just thought I'd do a quick update here. So um, I pulled the um, caribou out of the water here uh, yesterday just to see how we were coming along with the degreasing process and um, you can see there's still a little bit of grease on the top skull there and on the um, kind of the top of the nasal bones which isn't totally unexpected just by because of the way we're doing this trying to keep the um, all the horn out of the water um, it's gotten fairly clean uh, around the eye. I checked the bottom as well and the bottom looks like it's completely degreased but that's usually not a greasy spot uh, to begin with. Um, the eye sockets you can see there's a bit of decoloration around there but uh, that'll lighten up with peroxide very easily. It's uh, really these top of the skull grease, um, grease spots here that we got to take care of a bit on the nasal bones but overall I think it's coming along pretty pretty well and uh, there's a little bit on the side there but yeah it's it's coming around very well I'm just going to uh, show you inside the nasal bones here real quick and uh, you can see up in here all those nasal bones are nice and preserved it's turned out extremely well. The um, flesh is completely gone at this point. Of, obviously we're, we're just uh, cleaning up the um, degreasing it and uh, yeah overall I'd say it's quite good as you can see the water that I was degreasing in is fairly cloudy. That's just from the grease and whatnot that's been coming out of it but uh, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the results so far, but we're going to try to degrease the top a bit more before we start on uh, whitening it at all. So, anyways, uh, for now, that's where we're at, and 
give you guys another update soon. All right, uh, just time for our next little update here. Um, as you can see, the uh, skull has been pulled out of the water after the degreasing process. Um, it's actually gotten quite clean and fairly white. Um, and as you can, this is without any peroxide or anything yet. So you can see it's um, kind of that natural bone color, but it did degrease fairly well. And if you uh, take a look, there's still a few areas that are dark um, right around the eye socket there. But uh, in terms of the actual grease staining itself, it's minimal to none. Um, as you can see right on, there's some, can't see really great in this light, but right on the bridge of the nose, there's a little bit of discoloration, but it's not grease. It's just from the bone marrow and whatnot. And overall, an excellent result. Um, the next step we're going to do here now, though, is I'm, I uh, don't like the um, unevenness of the coloration so on some of those darker spots. So I'm going to take a very light peroxide, maybe 3%, and just try to even out the color of all the bone. I don't want to bleach, really bleach the bone white, white. I just want to kind of even the color out. Um, I do have some 40% peroxide I might use on some of the darker areas, but basically um, we're going to just try to even it out without bleaching it super white. I'm going to tr try to leave this the natural white bone color without getting that uh, super, super bright white color that you can get if you use the 40% peroxide and really soak it in there. I like the, having the natural color on the teeth. So you can see the teeth are always a little darker. But yeah, overall excellent results on this and uh, we're going to bring it in the house here tonight and get the uh, peroxide on. So stay tuned here and we'll be right back. Alright, here we are getting ready to um, start the whitening process. So we've got a uh, tin uh, foil baking dish. What we're going to do is we're going to put the skull in there so anything that drips off doesn't get all over the table. Um, also got this plastic sheet down just to protect the table a bit because we're doing this in the kitchen. Um, the one thing we got here, magnesium carbonate. You can also use uh, calcium carbonate. And basically what that does is you can mix it with the peroxide and make a paste and that'll let you put it on and keep it on an area but um, it's really what it's for, you just mix it with the peroxide it becomes a paste, brush it on, you're good to go um, the other thing we've got here is a little scrubby brush and uh, what we'll be using that for is if there's any little spots that we want to scrub to try to whiten them up extra good we'll do that now this bottle here says 3% on Peroxide on it, but it's actually 40% peroxide in this bottle. Um, it's very strong stuff, so you don't want to get that on you. We're going to be wearing gloves when we do this as well. And then uh, just two bottles of uh, two one liter bottles of regular 3% um, peroxide that you'd find at the drugstore, Walmart, or whatever. So, anyways, just thought I'd show you guys what the setup looks like, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, get going here. Okay, before we get going, I just wanted to give you an idea, you guys, the idea about the size of this thing. It takes up our entire kitchen table, as you can see. I also wanted to, this is a lot better light, just show you from the degreasing process what we are left with before any of this whitening. You can see there's some discoloration just in here. Might be a little bit greasy or maybe some grease coming out later, but over the eye there's a little bit of discoloration and on these nasal bones just a little bit so then inside here I don't know if you can still see or not but basically the water most of the time was up to about there so the inside got really clean actually and I was kind of wondering how that was going to work but it all came out swished it around enough but this actually came out extremely white just from the degreasing so um, like I said, just going to do a light um, peroxide on this. We're not going to heavily bleach it because um, I want to kind of keep it the bone color. I, uh, all this peroxide 
um, that I'm going to do today for is um, basically just even the color out a little bit. I'm a little bit fussy, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, also, some people, if they haven't been patient enough with uh, the degreasing and the maceration, sometimes these things will have a little bit of a smell. Um, if they do, and you soak it in peroxide, that'll kill any smell that there might be on this thing. But right now, this thing doesn't smell whatsoever. It's completely clean. There's nothing going to rot on this. So it turned out excellent, actually. Um, even the back, before I set in the pan, just where the brain stem connects, usually that's a little bit greasy. Um, it's a greasy area, but on this, like it's pretty, pretty dry. So I'm really happy with how this turned out and anyways um, I think what I'm going to do to start though is flip it upside down just do the bottom side first and then we'll flip it around put it in the pan and do the top and uh, yeah I think that's how we'll start all right now like I said, see I got this thing upside down on the table um, now what I'm doing right now is I've got uh, a little bit of peroxide in here um, with the calcium carbonate or magnesium carbonate, whatever you're using, the powder. And um, what you want to do is you just want to mix it up into a paste. I've tried to do it in the centerpiece. I'm a little short on the powder here. But uh, I'll just try to get it all in the middle. You just want to make that up into a paste. This is a little runnier than I would have liked. But that's what we're dealing with. Uh, not sure if something like baby powder would work, but I never tried it, but I know this well. This is actually from the taxidermy supply store. You can get uh, all the stuff there. If you tell them you're doing a Euro mount and you want the strong peroxide and you want the powder to make it a paste, they'll know what you're talking about. So this is a little bit runny, but I think it'll work for what we're doing. You want to try to be careful too not to get it on the colored part of the antler because it could possibly stain it. So all we'll do, we'll just paste this on. And this is pretty, I don't want to bleach this much, I'm just putting this on to make sure things are going to look nice and even for us. But um, get into the little cracks. You can just paint this on and it'll It'll uh, do pretty good for us here. So anyways, I'm going to do that on the bottom side and then we'll uh, flip it over. Okay, I just finished coating this. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but there's basically a thin little film of what it looks like to be powder. It's basically just the residue from the calcium. As the peroxide evaporates, it leave it on there. No, that'll just rinse off after. So um, take this in here just before we flip it back over. Um, the other thing I was going to mention too is, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned it in the original gear list here, was a little paintbrush. And that's just so you can get into all like these little nooks and crannies and make sure it's all coated so you can get it all evened out. And um, some people like the teeth really white, I don't. So I paint uh, this stuff around them just to try to leave them as natural color as I can. Um, it does look a little whiter right now than it will at the end just because that powder is that powder residue is on them It'll be more of the ivory color, but uh, the other thing I was going to mention too is uh, I've got the third or the 40 percent peroxide and the two bottles of three percent So you're probably wondering like what the mixture is I used to make this um, Well, there's two ways you can do it um, You could use a lower strength peroxide over a longer period of time or you can use the high strength peroxide for a short period of time. Um, I've done this before. Um, I've experimented with it lots. Uh, so, and I kind of know what, how much time it's going to take for using either or, but uh, basically I'm using the higher strength stuff and I'm just going to leave it on for a shorter duration and I'll rinse it off with uh, water um, for shortly. Now, if you, don't have access to the 40% that's okay you can use the 3% it's just going to get um, it's just going to take you a lot longer to get the same whitening results um, 
but the three percent is more forgiving so if you have never done this before and you're whitening it slowly and you want a certain shade or color uh, the three percent will do it but it'll just take longer um, if you want super super bright white you can lay on the 40% uh, peroxide and that will get it bleach white uh, pretty quickly so um, for what I'm doing here tonight um, I've got the 40% on here I will probably rinse it off with a 3% solution so it'll um, still be whitening but it'll cut the strength of it dramatically and then I will go and rinse the whole skull off um, all of this will happen in under an hour and uh, I should be at kind of the uh, not chalky white but the bone white um, ivory whitish kind of bone color that I'm looking for so anyways I will uh, let you go so I can get at this and get her done all right the one thing I am going to show you guys here uh, when you get in the nasal bones you want to make sure that you get all the way up in as far as you can up in there um, coat these little um, fine thin bones as well you'll want to get them even the other thing it does as well if you do miss uh, or if you do the maceration you never fully fully got it and there's still a little bit of organic material in there it will kill the smell of anything this one doesn't matter but um, some of them you might come across that but so I've got that coated just gonna keep on coating the outside here I can already tell that starting to uh, even out here get, uh, get use your little brush and this isn't because I'm too worried about getting the inside of this stuff all super white it's more just so it's an even transition between um, the stuff that we do see and what's in there and uh, actually this little thinner mixture is actually working out a lot better than what uh, what I thought so I actually might use that again but uh, anyways I will keep coating this and then I'll get back to you guys all right I'll just give you guys a quick update on the progress here so we've got the uh, whole thing covered there's a couple dark spots on the nose and over the eye there still but they're coming out um, this one here is pretty much all gone um, that one that looks like it's darker but it's just a shadow there now um, so what we're probably going to do we're just with uh, going to let it sit for just a little while longer I've touched up those darker spots when this dries it'll actually look um, a lot whiter than it is for those dark spots but uh, in the meantime what I've done is I've gone over um, I'm not sure if I can tell the color here but I've gone over some of these spots here that I didn't really want to whiten too much and uh, just neutralized it with uh, water so if you the one nice thing with using peroxide is um, all you do is cut it with water and it neutralizes it and that's all there is to it so pretty simple cleanup it's not uh, it's a harsh chemical if you get on your skin but it's easily neutralized and cleaned up so um, what I'm going to do though is after um, this is dried I'll take it and I'll rinse the whole skull off get all the peroxide off of it neutralize it and then I'll leave it and let it dry after the whole skull is completely dry I'll come back and take a look and if we want to hit those dark spots with um, a little more peroxide we will or we might just uh, call it good and like the look of it and uh, go on to the next step which will be uh, hanging this but uh, yeah for now it's overall it's really uh, started to blend together here so I think I think we're in good shape but I'm just going to give that nose and that one piece of the eye there a little more time and uh, we'll call that good I think for the whitening for now and like I said we'll rinse the whole thing off after and um, 
uh, whatever you do, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, do not use Clorox bleach for the whitening process, only use peroxide. Peroxide will not hurt, hurt the bone. Uh, Clorox bleach will make the bone incredibly porous and it'll happen very quickly. Um, the other thing I was going to mention too is, um, it's hard to tell in this light I think, but sometimes your antlers look a little dull after they've sat for a while. Um, I'll show, where, before we hang this, we're going to put a product on it. Um, it'll make it look more like uh, it was in the field, it's not a stain or a wax or anything like that, it's, um, we'll get to that part of the video in a bit, but um, yeah, for now we'll just wait till this uh, sets up a little more, and uh, yeah, that's already starting to lighten up pretty good there, um, and uh, yeah, we will, uh, we'll go and try to uh, get this all evened out. We'll rinse it, it we'll put it up for tonight to dry out again, and then we'll check it after it's dry. And then I might touch up the nose and the eye there again, just to lighten that up just a touch more. But yeah, I think overall it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it so far. All right, we'll uh, give you an update here in a bit. All right, hey guys, it's uh, we're pretty much at the point where we're going to be mounting the caribou here now. Now question is how to get this thing on the wall. Um, originally I had planned to use some of this wire here. It's um, to find it at Home Depot. It's just a 12 gauge multi-purpose uh, galvanized wire. Just bend up a little uh, loop and loop it through here, potentially out the back, make a loop and put it on a hook. There's a really strong uh, bone in the back here. Oh, and if you really want to, you can put it out of the um, small cord column and just make a loop, hang it on the wall. Um, but uh, I wanted to explore a couple other options as well. So one was using this uh, ring hardware. It's find all this stuff at Home Depot. Um, basically, it's for like a tie-down strap for like a dock or you screw it onto a board and then you got a tie down strap on it. Um, I was thinking of putting it here, but as you can see, it's a little bit too wide, too big. I couldn't really find a smaller one. I was just going to screw it on um, with some self tapping screws and then hang it like that. I thought that was a good idea. Um, sorry. Uh, I think this one though, I've got a buffalo I'm doing this too. I think this one will work better for the buffalo. It's a pretty big hook. Um, the next idea I had was to use these little guys here and uh, these rings. And basically what I would do is I would screw two holes like that and put the ring in and basically it's the same idea but you would have a little ring and a little ring hooked up on there, just a different way of mounting it. Um, the one problem though was those two little, um, on here there's two little, or two bolts that you would have to do for one of these uh, rope clips or whatever they call them. And so that would go there and there, and then I'd have to get my finger in, or a wrench or something to get both of those nuts tightened up and one would probably be okay but two or figured I might have some issues and I didn't want to be screwing around with this so um, kind of I think I'm past uh, that one for this mount anyway um, the next thing I was looking at is this guy and it's basically on um, the same idea as the first one except for instead of four screws you'd have one bolt and what we could do is drill a hole straight through there, put this in like so, and I could get my finger and the nut in here and would be able to get that tightened down. Um, the other idea I had was to put this in here like the, so through the back and that makes a really nice uh, pivoting point. It fits almost perfectly in there actually. 
And, but what I would have to do is I would have to drill a hole at an angle um, through here, get that bolt up and then screw the nut on. So, you know, it's not just clean straight through hole. It's kind of a diagonal hole and I'm not sure this is a pretty strong bone and I think it'd be okay, but I'm not sure if um, it'd be smarter to go straight through and not overthink this thing or try to get fancy and go through the back. Also, when I'm mounting this, what I'm trying to do is um, when it's hanging on the wall, I want all the hardware hidden. So I, if I put it on this back piece, um, that loop will ultimately kind of be hanging like this over the hook. Um, so I'm not sure if that'll be visible above the mount or not. Um, and I, I'll show you the hook hardware that I'm going to use after when we go to put this on the wall. But I'm thinking right now just a simple clean hole through there. This piece of bone here, it's all connected to here. It's not, it shouldn't break off. There should be no reason why it would ever break. It's a pretty strong piece of the skull actually. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to try that and if that doesn't work, um, if some, for some reason this breaks, I will probably just, uh, wire the skull up because it'll be kind of past the point of no return at that point, but I don't think I'll have any issues drilling a hole through there, putting that loop on. And then if we, uh, look on the side, the way this should work. We should have it like that. It should go over the hook. If you can imagine what that'll look like and all this stuff should be hidden from view um, when this is hanging on the wall. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, the other thing we haven't done yet either is um, put anything on these antlers. A lot of guys like them natural. I, I uh, actually do prefer them natural myself. Um, but, uh, they are, maybe it's hard to tell in this light, but they are looking pretty dull and it's not really the way they looked when I, uh, originally taken the animal. So I did talk to a really good, uh, taxidermist friend of mine and, uh, he, uh, told me about a product that he uses for antlers and he does work for the Smithsonian and, uh, the uh, Royal Alberta Museum and a bunch of these big name museums and stuff and uh, told me what he uses so I think I am going to coat the antlers with that as well so we'll uh, probably do that a little later today and the other thing we'll do too is we'll just any of this little bits of schmeg or whatever that is we'll get that all cleaned up before we coat it and or uh, um, put this finish on and it's um, more or less like a, I'm gonna, I think it's more like a oil or a furniture polish kind of, or I'm not sure exactly what it is, but um, it's what he uses and I've seen his stuff and it looks great and it doesn't, it's not overly shiny like a lacquer or anything like that. So um, we'll go through that and uh, yeah, we should be able to mount this thing a bit later today here. All right, we'll, uh, I'll go and drill the hole and then we'll see what that looks like. All right, I got the hole drilled and I put this in. It actually was extremely simple to do. Now, this is loose. Um, now, just a couple things. When I drilled through here, I was, I don't know, a little hesitant just because I didn't know how thick that would be. Um, that bone is well over half an inch thick. So, I'm fairly confident there will be plenty to hold this. Um, the other thing was I was easily able to get the nut on the back and this thing threaded in. Um, however, um, the top, I'm going to say half, three quarter inches of the bolt isn't threaded. Um, and I don't have any uh, washers or lock washers here. So um, I will pull this off after. Um, I don't, just don't have any washers today, so I have to get some, but I'll pull it off after. We'll put some washers in there, get this snugged up not over tightened or anything but just a little snug it's right now it's just kind of free rolling um 
and then we got our ring so we've got we can put that on our hook now and uh, the next step will be to get these antlers uh, just cleaned up a little bit a um, couple spots where there's some pencil marks from when they scored it get those cleaned up we'll get our uh, secret little um, coating on that I'll reveal when we do that and then we'll get the hook on the wall to mount this and we'll put it up so uh, just uh, stay tuned okay just giving a, a quick update here so I finally got my washers uh, lock washer flat washer on the inside as well I thought that would actually even be a little better putting this flat washer here just uh, puts the pressure over a little bigger surface area than just a hole but pretty happy with the way that turned out it actually looks kind of professional too and I'm not sure if you can see in there but um, the lock washers and the bolt I never had to cut it it goes almost to the top of the skull plate but it worked good now I was going to also show the other piece of hardware I got and it's these hooks and they're just like a rope hook or something you can get them from Home Depot or a place like that um, I can't remember where I got these ones exactly but it's just a metal hook and they're rated to hold a lot of weight I think like a hundred plus pounds so more than enough to uh, hold a European mount but uh, when this is on the wall it'll basically be hooked like that um, or so so see what that looks like um, this hardware might be a little high I'm not sure the other th option too, I'm not sure if uh, work or not, but if we just had a plain hook, you might be able to turn this loop sideways and just put this right through there and get it hooked like that. But uh, I'm just going to try this anyway, see how that does for me, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, the other thing we mentioned before, we're going to um, wipe down the antler, clean the antlers up a bit, wipe them down with. Uh, a special uh, stuff, well not even really special, but I'll just show you guys what it is. It's Scott's Liquid Gold. Um, now, Mop and Glow is the one that a lot of guys go to. However, Mop and Glow, um, I've been told, is uh, good for, uh, or the prefer preferential product for horned antlers, or horned uh, games, so like sheep or bison, etc. For antlers, um, this Scott's Liquid Gold, I was told that's what I should use, and this was again from my uh, taxidermist friend who has done a lot of work for some pretty high-end museums, so I'm going to just stick with his recommendation and uh, go from there. But uh, So that'll be the next step, to clean the antlers, wipe them down with the uh, Scott's Liquid Gold, and then I'll uh, get the hook up and we'll put it on the wall here. All right, I uh, just want to show you guys this uh, on the wall. Now this isn't the spot that I'm going to keep it or that I originally intended to put it where I wanted to put it. There's no stud in the wall. I thought there was, but apparently there's not. So it's all cleaned up. It's got the um, uh, Scots gold on it. It's still wet, as you can see. But once it dries, it won't have any kind of sheen at all on it. But it, really brought the uh, colors in the antler back out pretty happy with this not uh, greasy looking it's a little bit wet looking um, here is what this hardware looks like at the end of the day so as you can see it turned out pretty well um, this uh, hook worked pretty good it was easy to flip up on there um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Anyways, pretty simple hanging solution for this thing. And you can see the antlers, or the, yeah, the antlers stay back from the wall just enough, and the, most of the hardware is pretty well hidden. And um, you can see that uh, that Scott's brought the color right back in those antlers there, and made it look pretty close to the way it did when I first got it, but. Um, like I said, I never over bleached, uh, over bleached the skull, but in the case that you do and you want to lighten it up, some people have used tea to lighten it up, but I'm pretty happy with the way this is right now. And um, yeah, I think it's 
going to end up looking pretty good wherever I finally get to keep it. But uh, for now, I'll just uh, probably take it down and finish letting the uh, Scott's Liquid Gold dry out on it. And then i got to find a permanent home for this thing. But it's absolutely massive. 404 inches. This is a pretty high ceiling in here. Just dwarfs the mountain goat. And uh, yeah, it's way too tight. It's I need a little bigger room or something to put this in. So, anyways, that's the uh, final result. And hopefully, this has helped somebody on their uh, journey to making a, their own uh, European mount with a caribou. Um, like I said, this could have been done a lot quicker if I would have used the simmering method or beetles or something, but I wanted to kind of experiment with uh, maceration on this with keeping the uh, beds out of the water, or sort of the uh, shovel out of the water and whatnot. And yeah, I think the end result was worth it to me anyways. So anyways, uh, comment below and uh, you guys have any other tips for doing European mounts and whatnot uh, please leave them below and let me know what they are so I'm always trying to improve my process and looking for new little tips all the time so anyways have a good one